Welcome back after the break and we'll continue our discussion about the educational systems in ASEAN countries, especially here in Thailand. From your point of view, being a long-time lecturer and researcher, what kind of views do you have about the current educational preparations from the Thai side for the ASEAN integration? <laughs> well, uh, I'm also, of course a little bit worried about uh, the situation and I hope that uh, that I mean, uh, that is, seems to be the general opinion, also as far as I understood in the in the press and media and so on, that uh, uh, Thailand has to now prepare quite well for the for the coming AEC in the sense of uh, improving, of course, the English language skills because yes. I think English is going to be the working language of AEC. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, for not the <laughs> next, yeah, not Thai for the next uh, five to ten years, and if ever it is a local language that, that will be chosen as the working language, I don't, I can't imagine it would be no. a, it would be Thai. It could be then Bahasa Indonesia I or Bahasa so. Melayu. Mm -hmm. That would be of course quite charming and uh, exciting. Uh, but uh, but anyway, so it's these things that I think the Thais have to now keep in mind: study more English possibly also start to study more the languages of your neighbors yes and all together of course study more your neighbors uh, uh, and uh, uh, like remaking this uh, history writing in a way historiography is uh, uh, start to discuss with uh, have some of the committees of uh, 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 Burmese historians Cambodian historians Thai historians uh, to write together the history of Thailand or the, together the history of mainland Southeast Asia with the Vietnamese and Laos scholars as well, sitting mm -hmm. down together and comparing a little bit your notes and your, 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 your views, your views and, and, and these royal chronicles and, and the stone inscriptions and come to some sort of conclusion, okay, your chronicles say this, our chronicles say that, let's try to find some sort of a compromise there or then simply say the Khmer chronicles say, say like this, the, whatever Thai chronicles say like this, and that's it, and we can't really decide. Mm -hmm. But I think that will be interesting though, it will be an interesting <laughs> project, but it might be very time consuming, right? Uh, yes, I think it's a, it's a nice challenge uh, for, for, the, for the Thais and for the Southeast Asians. Finally now, in a way, start to look at each other's in the eyes and not always look into the West and mm -hmm. seek uh, uh, answers from <laughs> London and Washington or Paris or whatever. But now sit down together and, and uh, write your own history and your own version of your own history, your own ethnic identities, your own way of practice. Don't let uh, Westerners always uh, write about uh, yes. your way of practicing Buddhism uh, and, and all that. Uh, you can also write about it by, by yourself or you can go to Burma and, and look at that. So there's so many interesting things that can be now done hopefully by the uh, by the Southeast Asian scholars themselves. Yes, and in terms of like lecturing at Mahidon University International College, you've seen a variety of students with different interests. Have there been growing interests in studying Southeast Asian? Is the interest at the level that you think is enough for the uh, preparations? Well, I've been there now for more than 10 years and, and uh, well, I think it's been sort of stable. I, I, I'm not quite sure if I can say it's growing, mm -hmm. uh, but it's been stable and, and we have had, of course, people from all over the world. We have had uh, Norwegian students and Australian students, we have American students, we have British students, German students and so on, uh, plus, of course, Burmese students, Bhutanese mm -hmm. and Thais. So it's a very mixed group, which is uh, quite nice. And uh, the interests are different, but I think we have produced very high quality graduates. Uh, and they have found, uh, many of them have found uh, jobs even with the bachelor's degree or already in the, in the media, in the international organizations, in uh, private businesses uh, and so on. But of course many of them also then go for the master's for the degrees mm -hmm. and some of them are also now preparing their PhDs. Uh, so that, uh, but of course I, I, I would wish to have maybe even more students. Now, so far we have produced maybe 60 something, uh, 60 plus uh, uh, and graduates, uh, so that is not much. Uh, but uh, so I hope in the in the future more and more parents will send their their students to study with us uh, in order to learn p better English. With these four years, uh, you are quite well trained, and uh, then also of course to come to study more about Southeast Asian issues. Mm -hmm. And has there been a growing trend in um, in terms of the subjects itself? Has there been more subjects based on? economic relations or has it still been a fair share of history and and current affairs? Uh, well we have been also during these 10 years we have been improving the pro program quite a lot 
and uh, we have now uh, some new cr courses still pending that we would like to start to teach soon. And also we have a master's degree uh, program also pending and hopefully oh, wow. Mahidon University uh, administration will soon decide. Uh, a master in Southeast Asian studies? Master, yes, master's oh. degree program in Southeast Asian studies. So that, uh, yeah, I think we are, of course, history is important. I'm a historian, so I put the emphasis on that. But we do look at the uh, environmental issues. We look at uh, economic problems. Uh, uh, and uh, we discuss, of course, if I teach other courses uh, that are not officially Southeast Asia, I still talk about Southeast Asia even there. So I think you get quite a variety of, of courses uh, uh, about war and ethnicity mm -hmm. and, and uh, all, all kinds of issues, gender issues and so on. And talking about ethnicity, you know, it's a key, it's a kind of like a buzzword in a few years. But from your current, vis your past visits to Myanmar, what kind of uh, attitudes have you seen? Has it been a changing attitudes towards the different ethnic groups with the changing political developments? Uh, well, inside Burma, everything, or inside Myanmar, everything looks actually different. I mean, the, the whole ethnicization of Myanmar is very much the work of the Western scholars. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, of course, uh, huge problems uh, and arguments about the uh, natural resources at the border areas, and that is understandable. Of course, the people who live at the border areas, they should benefit something of the mineral wealth of those areas. Uh, it can't all be grabbed by the, by the central government. But uh, vice versa, it, should, it shouldn't entirely be grabbed by the border areas either, and then maybe smuggled uh, across the border. So it's quite a uh, difficult issue. And actually, it's more about economy than about ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, it's quite uh, interesting to see inside Burma, inside Myanmar, everyone, the, nearly the first question after they introduce, the, the, the Burmese people introduce uh, themselves, the next question is, which ethnic group are you? Yes. Or, or actually, that, maybe they would say it when they introduce yeah, themselves. Yeah, exactly, already. It's in the name a little mm -hmm. bit often. And it's no problem. After that, it's okay. It's like maybe the Thais would say, where are you from? I'm from, uh, you know, which part of Bangkok or which part of the country? Mm -hmm. And after that's okay, let's go to the movie, let's go to drink coffee. And that's it. So, uh, and also then, of course, uh, what, what impresses me is that uh, everyone speaks very good Burmese. I have studied Burmese many years, never learned it, but I can hear that they speak very good Burmese. So whether it's Indian Muslims or whether it's, uh, it's any ethnic groups, Pao, Shan, Arakan. Kachin, of course, Arakanese, of course, uh, speak uh, perfect uh, Burmese anyway, but everyone speaks perfect Burmese. So it is not an issue actually inside the country that much uh, in the center. It's of course only, as I said, the border regions. Mm -hmm. And um, there are lots of different issues that are on plate, right? With the um, Dawei Industrial Park, Industrial Estate, do you think that that could be a viable opportunity for the country? Uh, definitely, yes. It's going to be very interesting now because uh, it is in a way this old project that uh, has been long time there to sort of surpass somehow Singapore and have these trade links uh, uh, in a way between Thailand and uh, uh, Burma and, and be able to transport things uh, across the Malaccan Peninsula. So it's all actually quite uh, exciting. And I'm sure it's, it's going to boost also Myanmar economy and the people's economy. But of course, uh, the people have to be very alert and uh, and uh, active and uh, and point out the criticize then if there are any and en issues about the environment. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is of course something that they have to. They are responsible and the rest of the world maybe too keep an eye on that. But I mean overall, I think we shouldn't uh, somehow resist uh, the development and the project uh, as such. But just be aware that it ha has its risks. Uh, but it also is going to have its benefits. Yes, and I'll sh I'm sure that for many countries in the developing stages, sometimes uh, certain decisions may be very difficult to make, but then in, we have to think of it in the long term and like see that if a majority of people could benefit, then what we need to do now is try to minimize the impacts when we c try to build different projects. But from your point of view, just as a last point, what kind of um, threats do you think that the Thai government could 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 view from these like development projects in Myanmar and the political climate that seems ever more optimistic? <laughs> oh, or maybe well, migrant fl labor flows? Well, or? well uh, there's been no news, of course, that many of the migrants, of course, probably want to, to go back to, to Myanmar to work there, and that's understandable. So then probably Thailand will have to find migrants from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it's also an opportunity, of course, for for Thailand to, 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 to now uh, somehow improve their links to Myanmar. Altogether, the pe people of Myanmar as well 
uh, and not only the government of Myanmar, but also, of course, if there is now a more democratic government, that too. Uh, and uh, and start also some, uh, what, what would be, I, I think, would be very good is, is a far more student exchange. We do have, of course, lots of Myanmar students coming to, to Thailand to study. But we should maybe start to, in terms of whole ASEAN, start more active some sort of student exchange thought, already yes. on the maybe senior high school. Mm -hmm. Like we, we do send students, uh, Thai students, uh, uh, teenagers to America, America work and uh, travel, There's all kinds every, of yeah. things, yeah, yeah, all kinds of places, uh, even to Finland, uh, but uh, Norway, uh, but uh, why not send them to Burma, so for, for, or Vietnam, uh, Philippines, yes. so that they would really learn the language as a young teenager and, and uh, uh, understand the culture, live in a family, ordinary middle class uh, family, and uh, with kids uh, in same age, go yes. to school there. With them. And, uh, mm -hmm. So it would be very useful, and I'm sure that will be a develop maybe in the, in the future. That's very important, I think, as well, because there is the ASEAN University Network, but I think there needs to be more flow between um, not just like a one-year kind of activity, but also different schools in different regions of Thailand could actually embark on these programs to exchange on a continuous basis yeah. and to understand, maybe start with their language. I think that language could play a role in understanding very much about each country's culture. So maybe Thais could learn more about the Burmese language or anything to get a better understanding and to stop the kind of sense of us and them or us versus them between all of our neighbors. Because if we look at different parts, like we, we have to start with the mentality of thinking of them as our neighbors, not just as, you know, <laughs> we, we need to be better, you know. So there's lots of things and lots of rooms for improvements. And I thank you very much for your help in sharing us about uh, different perspectives on the growing interest or maybe the need for more interest in yeah. Southeast Asian studies. Thank you for your help. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you again, maybe in the future, after the integration, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And that's all the time we have for today's uh, edition of ASEAN Talk. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Swati